Hello everyone, my name is PJ and welcome to The Void. What is The Void? Well, it's this place. This place. A vast emptiness all my own in which I can do or make anything I want in a snap. And this is my assistant, Mono the Moogle. In The Void, I primarily do video game reviews in an animatic style like this. I also do top 10 lists, I have plans, discuss my book series, and talk about other things, pretty much anything I want. My video game reviews follow a particular structure, ending with a score being assigned to the game. All games start with a 5 out of 10, and then I add or deduct points for things I like or don't like about it. I begin with my 5 main categories. Graphics, Music, Gameplay, Story, and Presentation. For graphics, I don't judge games for being low poly or low resolution. Every creation is a product of its time after all, and stylization exists in all eras. Instead, I judge based on graphical structure and art direction, character and environment design, balanced color schemes, good contrast, that sort of thing. This category gets a point for being pretty or pleasing to look at, loses a point for being ugly, eye straining, or flooded with graphical glitches, or no points for blandness or balance of the two. Music covers both the soundtrack and how it's handled in the game, as well as sound effects and overall sound design. Voice acting isn't included in this category because it's more of a luxury and not an integral component of the medium. Music gets a point for having an OST that's entertaining to listen to even when you're not playing the game, loses a point for having annoying songs or songs with poor audio quality, and no points if the OST is just okay, or if the game happens to have no sound at all. Gameplay tends to be the category I spend the most time talking about. It is, after all, the most important part of 99% of games. With this, I talk about the core mechanics of the game and whether or not I think they work or how they can be improved. It gets a point if it's fun to play and isn't handicapped by cryptic controls or glitches. Loses a point if people can't even figure out how to play it or can't because it's programmed so poorly. Or no points if the game has a mix of good and bad mechanics. When I talk about the story, it's important to know that I'm not just talking about the plot. I'm also talking about the setting and the characters in it. As an author myself, things like pacing, well-balanced humor, character motivations, and plot holes are very important to me. Story gets a point if it has a deep plot and or a memorable cast, loses a point if the plot makes no sense and has characters that lack clear motives, or no point if it has a boring story or, failing that, none at all. Presentation is kind of confusing, as it encompasses all the things that make a game that aren't covered in the first four categories. Luxuries like clean menus and readable fonts, manuals or other goodies that come with boxed copies, voice acting, special meta bonuses, and more. Ever since the seventh generation of gaming, less and less games have included a manual, so that typically detracts from its favor in this category. It gets a point if it has a colorful manual, good voice acting or other cool bonuses, loses a point if it has no manual, no special features, and terrible voice acting, or no points for a balance of good and bad. After I cover the five main categories, I may decide to do a sixth category called Miscellaneous. It is here that I talk about all the aspects of the game that I felt warranted a separate discussion, like a mechanic that I really liked or disliked, or a character that left a big impression on me. Such things generally warrant bonuses or deductions to the score on their own, causing it to fluctuate quite wildly. It gets pretty exciting when I have a big miscellaneous category. Once all the points have been covered, the final score is given. 0 out of 10 is the lowest score, and is only possible if the game loses a point in all five categories and has nothing redeemable that I can think of. Scores of 1 to 3 are bad games, but not irredeemable. Games with a 3 out of 10 are worth playing at least once. Scores of 4 to 6 are average, the kinds of games where opinions divide their audiences between the ones that love them and the ones that hate them. There are some games that I really love that have gotten a 6 out of 10, so don't assume it's a bad score. This isn't IGN. Scores of 7 to 9 are for great games, and would be the scores that most of my personal favorite games of all time will likely receive. And finally, 10 out of 10. 
is the maximum score. It is only possible if a game gets a plus one in all five categories, and I can think of nothing bad enough to lower its score with a miscellaneous point. I don't know if anything will ever receive this score, including my favorite games of all time. I intend to savor it for a game that I believe truly deserves it. After the review wraps up, I'll also promote a few extra materials related to the game that I feel deserve checking out, such as sequels, movie adaptations, or fan-made products. If applicable, I'll also mention who my favorite female character was in my waifu of the day block. So that's everything you need to know. If you haven't already, I've got a bunch of videos all waiting for you to watch them. And don't forget to share this channel with your friends and join my Discord. Until next time, I'll be here, in the darkness, quietly awaiting your return.